hello! In this video we're going to be looking at oxidising and reducing agents for the higher chemistry course in unit one. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of board chat and then I'm going to take my face off screen to take you through um, how to use the data book clip for these sorts of questions and have a look at some of the most common questions that the SQA will ask you. So to start off with what oxidising and reducing agents are, so this is like stepping into opposite land um, so it can get a little bit confusing, but if you break it down um, into small steps for yourself, you shouldn't get too muddled up in your head. So reducing agents are oxidised, so anything that's been oxidised can be classed as a reducing agent. If you struggle to identify what's been oxidised and what's been reduced in an overall redox reaction, be sure to check out my video on identifying um, reduction and oxidation reactions and that should help you with that problem. So because reducing agents are oxidised, that means they are losing electrons in the reaction and they generally therefore have low electronegativities. So anything that has a low electronegativity is usually a good reducing agent because if its electronegativity is low, it doesn't have a great attraction for bonding electrons, which means it will freely give them away. Hence the loss. Then the opposite is that oxidising agents are reduced. So anything that's been reduced in the redox reaction would be classed as an oxidising agent and they gain electrons because they're being reduced. So just remember oil rig, uh, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. So they're gaining electrons and that means that they probably therefore have a high electronegativity, a great attraction for bonding electrons. So they are readily taking electrons on. So now we're going to look at how the data booklet can help us identify good and bad oxidising and reducing agents. Okay, so here is the electrochemical series that you'll find on page 13 of the updated higher and advanced higher data booklet. If you've got an old data booklet, it'll be on page 12. But if we look at the electrochemical series, we've got reduction reactions going from left to right. So we can use this to help us identify whether something would be a good reducing agent or a good oxidising agent. So the best reducing agents are at the top right hand corner. So that means that lithium is the best reducing agent out of all of these substances. So anytime you're looking for a reducing agent, you'll want to look on the right hand side. That's easy to remember because R for reducing, R for right. Then the opposite is the case that the best oxidizing agents are down at the bottom left. And again, if you're looking for an oxidizing agent, you would look down the left hand side and then therefore the one furthest down is fluorine, so that would be the best oxidising agent out of all of the possible ones listed here. So the closer to the bottom it is on the left hand side, the better the oxidising agent. Higher up on the right hand side, better reducing agent. There is one substance that can be used as a reducing agent that's not shown on the electrochemical CDs anywhere. So I'm just going to add this on here, and that is carbon monoxide. So carbon monoxide readily becomes carbon dioxide. That's going from CO to CO2. That's gaining oxygen. So that means it's readily oxidized. Therefore, that makes it a good reducing agent because remember, it's always the opposite. So whatever reaction is happening to it, it's the opposite type of agent. So that one's not on the data booklet. So you might want to add that on as a suitable reducing agent. So if we look at some examples of reduction, eh, redox reactions, sorry, and look to see if we can identify what the reducing and oxidizing agents are. So if we look at the iodide ions, so they're becoming neutral iodine. That means they're losing electrons, so they are being oxidized. So first of all, I'm just gonna write what type of reaction is happening to each of the thing. So if the iodide dyes are being oxidized, that means the permanganate's been reduced. Therefore, when it comes to the agents, this one is the reducing agent. The iodide ions are the reducing agent. The permanganate are the oxidizing agent. And if we were to look at the electrochemical series for this, so iodide is here and permanganate is here. So iodide is not the best reducing agent you can get, but it's suitable to uh, use to reduce permanganate because it's above it 
in the electrochemical series. So any time you're looking for a reducing agent, you need it to be above that reaction you're trying to do on the right hand side. Any time you're looking for a suitable oxidizing agent, you need to look below the reaction on the left. Okay, so if we're trying to oxidize iodide ions to iodine, then we can use any of these substances that are below on the left. If we're trying to reduce permanganate to manganese, we can use any of these substances above it on the right. Then if we go on to the next one, so again I'm just going to identify what reactions are happening first. So the hypochlorite OCl negative is becoming chloride, so that's losing oxygen. So loss of oxygen is reduction, which means that the iodide ions are again being oxidized. Then in terms of the agents, that's the oxidizing agent and the iodide are the reducing agent. Then the last one is a bit harder because you have sulfur present, which is uh, technically a spectator ion in this particular reaction. So it's not actually doing anything, but it's, because it's there, you can't see the charges on the ions, which isn't a problem because you can work them out with your knowledge from National 5. So silver, which is the symbol EG, is a metal. Any metals become positive ions. So if the metal's in a compound, it's positive. It doesn't matter how many positive charges it has, as long as you know it's positive. So that silver is going from being positive and if you think you'll forget, you can write the charges on. Uh, and so it's going from being positive to being neutral. So that's gained electrons. So that's been reduced. Because reduction is gain. The aluminium is going from being neutral to being in a compound where it will be positive because it is a metal. And it's in particular three positive. So that means it's lost electrons. So that will be oxidized. Therefore, for the agents, it's opposites. So the silver ions are the oxidizing agent, the aluminium metal is the reducing agent. Okay, so I personally find it easier to identify what reaction is happening to each of the reactants first and then assign the agents from that, um, but it's up to you if you have the ability to go straight to the oxidizing agent, reducing agent determination, that's totally fine. So if we look at some past paper questions now that SQ have asked about oxidising and reducing agents. So we've got this one here from the 2019 paper. It was asking which of the following is most likely to act as a reducing agent. So if we have a look at all the possibilities, you're looking for the one that's highest up on the right hand side. Because remember, the best reducing agents are up here. The ones we've got are permanganate. Um, hydrogen peroxide, dichromate, and then there is also carbon monoxide, which, like I mentioned before, isn't actually on here, but it is a good reducing agent. So because these three are all at the bottom left, they're actually good oxidizing agents. They wouldn't actually work as reducing agents because they're on the left-hand side. Reducing agents have to be on the right-hand side. So therefore, carbon monoxide would be our best bet for that particular one. So the next question, which of the following ions could be used to oxidize sulfite ions to sulfate ions? So if you're looking for a suitable reduction, um, sorry, a suitable reducing agent or an oxidizing agent, you need to look to see where that particular reaction is in the electrochemical series. So because it's an oxidation, it will be going from right to left. So we have to look for it backwards. So we're looking for SO3 going to SO4, so that's this particular reaction here. I just highlight it. So if we are looking for an oxidizing agent, that can be anything above this reaction on the left hand. If we're looking for an oxidizing agent, that can be anything below the reaction on the left hand side because the best oxidizing agents are the bottom left. So if we go back to what the options were, we've got chromine, chromate 3 positive, so that particular ion, if we find it 
is up here, so that's not suitable because it's above it. We've got aluminium 3 positive, which is up here, so again, not suitable. We've got iron 3 positive, which will be the answer because that's the one that's below the reaction on the left. And if we just check the last one, which is tin 4 positive, that's there. Again, that's above it, so that won't be suitable as an oxidising agent. So the only one that work out of the given options there is the iron 3. Next one, which of the following is the strongest reducing agent? So again, the best reducing agents are at the top right hand side. So out of those options, we had lithium was the highest up, so that would be the best reducing agent out of those options. So in question 17, it's just asking about the nature of an oxidising agent. So you've got the option of gaining or losing electrons and it being oxidised or reduced. So I think it's probably easier to narrow it down from what reaction's happening to it first. So remember, an oxidised agent gets reduced. It's the opposite reaction that happens to it. So that rules out A and B, because it can't be getting oxidised. And then if it's being reduced, it must be gaining electrons because of oil rig. Reduction is gain. So C would be our answer. Uh, 18 is not really relevant to oxidising and reducing agents, so if we skip to 19, which of the following ions could be used to oxidise iodide ions to iodine? So again, we're looking for an oxidation reaction to happen, so that reaction is going to be going from right to left in the electrochemical series. So if we just find that one. So here it is here. So if we're looking for an oxidising agent, we can have anything below that reaction on the left. So if we go back to the options that we're given, we've got SO4 to negative. So that is here. So that's above the reaction, so that's not suitable. SO3 to negative, that's on the other side. So that's actually on the reducing agent side. So that's not going to be suitable as an oxidising agent at all. CR3 positive, so that's up here. Again, it's too high up from that reaction. It's not going to work. It needs to be below it. And then the other option was dichromate, which is underneath that reaction on the left. So that would be the suitable oxidising agent. So this question is a bit vague. So sometimes if you come across multiple choice questions, they're a bit vague and it doesn't really tell you specifically what part of the course it's related to. It's asking you if which some substance would react with bromine but not with iodine. If you the possible answers have ions, it's most likely to do with redox. It's the only really subtopic you do in higher chemistry that involves ions. So if you do have any possible answers that are to do with that have ions, then check the electrochemical series. So we're looking to see what will react with bromine, but not with iodine. So if we look for those two substances in the electrochemical series, um, and if we highlight their reactions, so there's the bromine reaction, and here's the reaction that has iodine in it. So these are both reduction reactions. They are going from left to right. So if we are trying to get it to react, it needs to be a reducing agent. But the questions told us that it will react with this one, the bromine, but not with the iodine. That means that it must lie in the middle of the two. So if it's going to work with one of them and not the other, it must be in between the two reactions in the electrochemical series. So those are the three options, the three reducing agents you could use to reduce bromine, but not iodine. So if we go back to the possible answers, Fe2 positive is the only one of those three options that's there. Okay, so anytime you're asked about things that will react with one thing and not with another, you need it to be in between the two reactions. And then the last question, very similar to one of the first ones, which of the following elements is the strongest reducing agent? Out of those options, it's still lithium that's highest up on the right hand side. So just remember, the electrochemical series is your best friend when it comes to identifying oxidising and reducing agents. Um, the, sometimes it can get uh, take a while to get your head around when you're looking for a suitable reagent 
for a specific reaction but it just takes a bit of practice um so yeah i hope that was helpful and don't forget to like and subscribe and if you've got any comments feel free to leave them thank you